Hello and welcome back, my royal rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the royal rogue. And tonight I have both news and questions about Harry's current state of mental health. And ironically, it is thanks to this Count Barbie Ken and his statement on this crazy phone hacking trial that really has thickened the plot. Thanks to Larissa Bona, I have a huge doubt concerning Mrs. Scovey's testimony today. According to the Sky News coverage of Harry's trial against the Mirror and Pierce Morgan, he said that he never socialized with Harry. However, and we can see in the text Scobie's statement, I have never socialized with Prince Harry. Mr. Scobie has said that he does not know the Duke of Sussex on a friendly level, while on the witness stand saying the two had never socialized before. Andrew Green KC, representing MGN, asked whether he had a vested interest in representing the couple in a good light to advance his career. Mr. Scoville responded, I don't know the Duke on that level. I don't have his phone number. I've never socialized with him before. What I'm doing here is today is actually making my life more difficult, uh, he told the court referring to his being branded as the couple's mouthpiece and cheerleader by other news publications. At the same time, Larissa Bona again, Mr. Scovey mentioned on his Finding Freedom book at the first chapter prologue, page 3 of the ebook I had access to, that Harry made confessions to him at their hotel small drinks gathering. So my question is, Mr. Scovey lying in his book or perjuring himself at court? And this is what that first chapter says. Being far from the scrutiny and pressures of home was also an opportunity for heart to hearts. On that same trip, Harry confessed to me at a small drinks gathering at our hotel that he really wished he were just a normal guy who could pack up and spend a year in Brazil pursuing his own passions. He said that he hated the smartphones being constantly thrust in his face and the thrum of professional camera shutters going off sometimes made him feel physically ill. Now, I want to make a stop and comment on all those pictures that we have seen of Harry for years interacting with children. And I have to say from a body language perspective that for the most part, I have always seen Harry's nonverbal expression genuine around children. Like he was having fun, he was engaging and charming. Uh, that doesn't go well with the bitter bell land that he has become in recent years. And uh, I found it interesting that I was listening to a podcast with Robert Greene, one of my favorite authors, who did extensive research in uh, body language for his book, The Laws of Human Nature, and he mentioned something that caught my attention. Uh, first, he said something that everybody, language specialist, agrees on that babies and children are incredible sponges that absorb everything that is going on around them. I even wrote about that in my book, that maybe the father arrives home from work, he comes charged with stress and the bad juju of a hard day at the office, and he wants to hold his baby, and the baby senses it and breaks down crying. It's an extreme example, but it can happen. It also happens with children. And that's what Green was saying, that toxic personalities don't like to be around children because children have the ability to see through their facade. Of course, there are always going to be psychopaths that are so good at fooling people that maybe they could fool children as well. But one thing is for sure, Harry is not a psychopath. He doesn't fit the bill. Uh, just to finish the idea, that's why you should pay attention when uh, children are uneasy about being with a neighbor, a friend of the family, or an older cousin, or an uncle, or aunt. I'm not going to get into grisly details in here, but you get the idea of what I'm talking about. And that's the thing with Harry's pictures with children. It's not only that you see Harry interacting with them, but they are at ease. So every now and then I'm looking through Harris pictures, uh, for example, for this video to make a point of Omid Scooby mentioning that they had this close meeting and Harry said that he would like to live a life pursuing his own passions. This is in so many ways odd, right? 
that he apparently had found the freedom he wanted, but it doesn't look like he's quite there. And I liked a comment from Eliza, home next door on Twitter. His bitterness and insecurity would have always been there. Just when a person is in a good state of mental health, they can control their negative emotions and focus on the present. His mental health has declined dramatically, and he lives in the past. Yes, it's hard to forget Harry when he was part of the team, and I still have a hard time believing that he actually felt threatened when William married Catherine or when George was born. Again, not gonna defend him in any way, but it's still baffling for me to see how a person could have such a change in personality in just a few years. We also have Blair's comment. Maybe he liked that his popularity with children gave him self-esteem and made him feel important. If Harry loved working with underprivileged children in Africa, he could have dedicated himself to that life long before Meghan. Also, it's great PR. Sorry, he brings out my inner cynic. Uh, I have shared with you my opinion on this, and it's that Harry would have liked to disappear from public life, have actual privacy, and I wouldn't be surprised that Meghan promised him a life like that, away from all the royal drama. I don't know, lost in the African savannas, but not to go number two in the bushes, nope. Uh, maybe something more cozy, uh, perhaps. But I'm sure that uh, that was uh, the future she painted. And that sounded exactly what he liked for himself. And of course, uh, Megan planned all that in advance in exquisite detail. And uh, what about now? He can't even go eating sushi because for some strange reason, paparazzis have developed some kind of mind-reading powers and they know exactly where they are going to be when they enter the venues. Do they have a sausage GPS or something? Imagine that you just want to go out with your wife and you have to go through the same stupid process of being photographed for the silliest things. And I, I don't know what was the big deal with Cameron Diaz and her husband. I don't know if Methane wanted to make it seem like they were going to dine together, but it doesn't look like Cameron acknowledged her presence at all. So this is the kind of pretending that Harry has to deal with. And at the same time, having security around them when nobody else has. It's sad, really. Even more ironic is that today, Arsa Smell released pictures of the Duke and Duchess of Sausages visiting a local youth group in Santa Barbara in support of mental health awareness. Oh, they look lovely, absolutely not forced at all. And Harry, well, Harry looks a lot like the guy from the meme Heidi Paint Harold. Uh, the worst thing is that Harry has burnt all bridges with the royal family. They could be rebuilt, but I don't think Meghan would ever fit in that equation. So uh, perhaps Harry's personality has changed because he realized that he doesn't have the simple life he wanted, the spontaneity to travel the world that he wanted, and he also doesn't have the royal clout anymore. But at least he's got his wife and children, right? Right? My wonderful 118,000 Roger Rogis plus the half a million who haven't subscribed yet. I love you all. Remember to like this video and the two most important words. Much love and bliss.